Hi, and welcome into Meet Me in the Movies Open Dialogue. This is Thomas Manning, and today is really a privilege to be sharing my recent interview with Lily Gladstone, lead actress from Killers of the Flower Moon, the new Martin Scorsese film. And in this five-minute junket slot, I was able to speak with Lily about the importance of family and community to her and how that manifests itself in her creativity and in her career as a performer. Uh, also got to ask her about the work from Julie O'Keefe, uh, the lead Osage costume consultant on Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, I actually interviewed Julie last month after the release of the film, so I enjoyed hearing from Lily's perspective as an actor uh, the importance of Julie's role on the film and you know, just that collaborative experience as you know, as an actor in filmmaking. So thank you so much again for watching and listening as we speak with Lily Gladstone about Killers of the Flower Moon. Hope you enjoy. Hi, Lily. I'm uh, Thomas Manning with WGWG. It's really a privilege to speak with you today, and I appreciate your time. Thank you, Thomas. Of course. And I'm going to head right into it. Uh, I know that your community and your family are extremely important to you on so many levels, uh, both personally and creatively. And that really manifests in the projects that you take on as an actor and the stories you tell. So I definitely want to give you the chance to speak more to the influence of your community in multiple aspects of your life and how you continue to draw from that in everything you do. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it always comes from community. You know, I early on, on my res, I was an express, exceptionally expressive and exuberant kid. And I noticed, especially in, there was a real stark contrast to when I was at home on the Blackfeet Nation with my community, how my, um, I don't know, my aunties, my uncles, just adults in the community encouraged that. Really, um, you know, first time that people saw me in a play, they were so... They were so supportive in telling my parents that it's what I needed to keep doing. And then we moved to the city, and that same sort of person that I was didn't necessarily have a place. I was told to be a little bit more contained, a little bit more mellow, a little bit more palatable, both by adults and by peers. Um, I mean, not to say that I wasn't teased growing up on the res either, but it's just different, you know, when it's coming from your cousins versus when it's coming from classmates. But um, yeah, I think there was always a real confidence that I had in what I wanted to do because it was so enforced by community, which is a very cultural thing where I grew up, um, Blackfeet specifically, and I don't want to get too into it because it's a long conversation, but anybody who's familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of need is less familiar with his uh, later draft of that later in life after spending time with my people, with um, Siksika in Canada, which is part of the Blackfoot Confederacy. What Maslow saw was that society's end goal is not to create a bunch of individualized, self-actualized people. Self-actualization is the basis of the pyramid in Blackfoot society, your community, lifts you up, supports what you want to do, and that leads toward cultural perpetuity, which in the end, I feel as a native person, stories like this are going to serve. It's showing that Osage people didn't perish during the reign of terror, very much still here, and are moving forward together as community and um, in perpetuity of culture. And uh, looking specifically to Killers of the Flower Moon, I'd love to talk about the work by Julie O'Keefe, uh, the lead Osage wardrobe consultant on the film. Uh, I had the privilege of speaking with her last month, uh, so I'd love to have you share from your perspective as an actor about the significance of her work and how those wardrobe choices helped you tap into the heart of your performance. As an actor, wardrobe is always the last element before audience. It's I, the character and how they move, how they breathe, how they have to pace themselves is fully influenced by what they're wearing. And I remember in one of my first fittings with Julie when I had my broadcloth skirt laid on and when I was cinched into it to keep the little butterfly fold on the side and it immediately like corseted me in and I could feel it. I said to Julie, you know, 
I really understand now how the Osage Nation gave birth to America's first prima ballerina, Maria Tallchief. <laughs> like you watch Maria Tallchief in, in any of her dances that you can find, you can find them on YouTube and you can't tear your eyes off of her. She is so regal. She is so, she is so powerful. And I could feel that. And it, uh, even though Molly was also, you know, a more introverted person and contending with this illness of diabetes the whole time, that, um, yeah, that lift that you get from how you wear your blanket, how you hold yourself was everything. Well, Lily, again, it was really an honor to be able to speak with you today. And Congrats on the film. I also want to mention that I loved your work in The Unknown Country. Thank uh, you. Such a such a beautiful film. Thank and you so uh, much. hopefully we're able to share more conversations in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. You have a great day. You too. Thank you.